Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. There is one question which have consistently been asked, actually severally, on this platform. The whereabouts of two individuals, Kipchumba Morkomen, the senator for El Geo Marakwet, and the vocal member of parliament, Oscar Sudi. Where are these two gentlemen? Several people have asked me whether these two gentlemen have ditched the Deputy President, Dr. William Samairuto. I want to assure you that Oscar Sudi and Kipchumba Murkomen will never ditch the Deputy President, Dr. William Samairuto. Their absence from or around the Deputy President is actually intended to achieve some political objectives, which I'm going to explain to you guys. Oscar Sudi is one of the closest allies of the DP. And that's why when the deputy president was going for that high-powered meeting in Uganda with Aaron Ayadin, the guy who accompanied him was none other than Oscar Sudi. And it was not the first time Oscar Sudi was accompanying the DP to such kind of high-level meetings. Kipchumba Murkomen is the legal advisor to the DP. Again, he cannot dump the deputy president. And of course, if you leave the personal relationship, they can also not dump the DP because politics is local. There is no way Oscar Sudi can become a member of parliament and uh, Kipjumba Murkomen becoming the senator without aligning and associating themselves with the deputy president. So the question then is, why are they missing from or around the deputy president of late? That's by design and is supposed to achieve some of these objectives. Number one is to make the United Democratic Alliance Party appear as a national party. I want to ask you a simple question. When the, DP, when the, the, the deputy president started his politics, who were accompanying him? If you are keen, not only Oscar Sudi and Kipchumba Murkomen are missing around the DP. Majority of Kalenjin members of parliament are no longer accompanying the deputy president in events. Why? Because they don't want a perception to be created that the United Democratic Alliance Party is a tribal party. Or they don't want that party to be associated with a Kalenjin. That's why whenever the DP is out there, you'll see several faces who are constant. For example, you'll see Aisha Jumwa, You'll definitely see Riyadi Gashagwa. You'll definitely see Alice Wahome. You'll definitely see Susan Kehika. You'll definitely see, Prof, maybe from Kisi, you'll definitely see Osoro. You'll definitely see the likes of Washiali, the likes of Mudama. So they are keen on making the United Democratic Alliance Party appear as a national party. Assuming the deputy president is in uh, Kakamega, for example, and then Oscar Sudi is there. Kipchumba Murkomen is there. Several other members of parliament from the larger Rift Valley are there. What will happen is that they'll be given a chance to speak. And since they'll be given a chance to speak, their names, because our politics is stable, their names will be noted as Kalenjins. And that is something that the DP is staying so hard. And that's why the deputy president has been consistent that the alliance is forming, the United Democratic Alliance, is basically a national alliance. So he doesn't want it to appear as a tribal politics because it's very easy, for example, to, to brand UD, UDA as a tribal polit I mean, as a tribal party if these guys were making public appearances around the DP. So the DP is keen on projecting the UDA as a national party. Number two, the other thing which is actually affecting them, why they are not much present, is the fact that they were, they were kind of uh, demoted. Kipjumba Murkomen was the majority leader, which meant any time he was present around the DP, he was going to speak. What has happened is that when no UDA was formed, they created what they were calling regional points persons. In uh, Rift Valley, for example, Joseph Nanok is the regional coordinator or the regional points person. 
So it means if Kipchumba Murkomen were to attend a function and they reduce the number of speakers, he might not get that chance of speaking. Or even if he were to get, the fact that he's now down there is affecting him. The same to Oscar Sudin. I tend to think that the deputy president has now decided that for Rift Valley, is going to use Joseph Nanok as the regional point person and as the key person. Then he goes the other side and is using uh, Susan Kehika as the face. And even uh, Kimani, Kimani, the body member of parliament, Kimani Ngujiri, as the points person. So that it doesn't really boil down to what I was talking about. Tribal party. So I think the mere fact that the deputy president promoted Nanok did not go down well, for example, with someone like Kipnuba Murkomen, who believes that he was the right guy to be the regional coordinator. For Oscar Sudi, I think Oscar Sudi is just fine from wherever he is. Number three, if you've been following the politics of these two gentlemen, Oscar Sudi, of three, the three gentlemen, Oscar Sudi, William Ruto, and Kipnuba Murkomen, there are specific roles they perform. Oscar Sudi, for example, is normally tasked with responding to specific issues. If there's something that the DP wants to come out and he can't say it, Oscar Sudi will always be asked to go online, live. Oscar Sudi can attack the president family without any problem. William Ruto cannot dare do that. So if you look at Captain uh, Murkomen, his role around the DP is always legal, confined to legal matters. So whenever the DP has anything legal, then Oscar, I mean, Kipchumba Murkomen will always come out forcefully. Like when there is, like when, the, when, when we had the BBI, Kipchumba Murkomen was, lock, was vocal, always trying to articulate, explain the DP's position. If there's any challenge, let's say one of the UDA leaders is being arrested and the rest, you'll always see Oscar Sudi coming out publicly. I mean, Kipchumba Murkomen coming out publicly whenever there's issues to be responded to, whenever there are insults to be thrown, I mean, Oscar Sudi will come. So the two gentlemen are performing specific functions. But again, if you've been following the DP, he's been trying to rebrand himself because the DP and his team were appearing as very bitter at some point. Even the deputy president was appearing to be very bitter whenever he was speaking. But of late, if you follow the DP and you listen to his speech, he has been trained by a PR firm. I don't know that firm. And they are doing a, a fantastic job, by the way. So the deputy president is delivering his message in a very soft way, polite way. He's no longer that abusive. The DP is no longer that bitter, that angry individual. So I think because the new team has taken over to manage the DP reputation, they decided that people like with loose mouth like Oscar Sudi, Kipchumba Murkomen, Caleb Kositanyi, you know, the, 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 the Kalenjin crew, takes a low profile. And that's good for the DP if you ask me. And number four is politics is local. The truth of the matter is that 85% or 86% of members of parliament, senators and governors, normally don't make it back to parliament. The biggest casualties are always those close to the boss. Like Raila Odinga, his close allies will always be around him. By being around him, it means they lose touch to the ground or with the ground. So I think these guys have realized that as much as they need, they deeply need them, they also need to go to the ground. Or they have been told that for you guys to succeed, you must go back to the ground. And because their politics is local, if the people of El Gemara quit, have a problem with Kipchumba Murkomen, however much is value is adding to the DP, that will not bother them. So these guys have gone back to the ground to fix the ground and probably they'll make a comeback later. And lastly, I also tend to think that there is a serious problem in Tim Tanga Tanga in Rift Valley. Susan Kihika and the party member of parliament, Kimani Ngunjeri, are fighting. Right? Now, you go in, in central Kenya, Riyadi Gashagwa, Moses Kuria are fighting to an extent that Moses Kuria has left. You can't tell me that in Rift Valley there are no fights. In Nyanza here, for example, Elido Walo and Obado are also in fight, competing on who should be the coordinator or the contact person. 
you go to the coastal region Hassan Omar and Aisha Jumwa to some extent are also involved in political fight over the UDA who should be the contact person so that cannot be ruled out in the larger Rift Valley so because of those frictions I think the DP has decided that you guys sort out your issues go to the ground Mchukwe low profile as I look for votes but for Oscar Sudi which brings me to my sixth point for Oscar Sudi I think the fact that he has a case on uh, his certificates and probably some other cases I think because of that he's been forced to take a low profile Oscar Sudi might be locked out he might not get the certificate of good conduct if he's not careful so the best thing he's doing now is to lie low like an envelope I don't know what you think but in my view there is no way Oscar Sudi there is no way Captain Bamur Komen can dump the deputy president Dr William Ruto their politics actually depends on William Samuel Ruto so which means their absence is actually because of the reasons which have opined in this particular video for those who are watching this channel for the first time please take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you and to the subscribers i want to continue. thank you guys for your continued support what we do on this channel is simple we analyze politics in a way you can't get any other place so the best thing you can always do is just to click the subscribe button so that anytime we produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you and again to those who have not yet subscribed to this channel please do it now and to the subscribers i want to continue thanking you guys from the bottom of my heart i don't take it for granted yeah the fact that you guys are sharing the videos you guys are giving it thumbs up i don't take it for granted so please i want to thank you but don't forget to give this particular video thumbs up don't forget to share the video and don't forget to drop your comment thanks you guys and may you have a good day by the way my, my my son has a birthday today his birthday was supposed to be on thursday and we celebrated as a family but insisted that the friends wanted to come and because the schools are not closed so we have a small get together for him and his friends so they'll be enjoying a lot today so i want you also to wish my boy take this opportunity to wish my boy a happy birthday he's actually turning eight the boy i'm normally around with most of the time <laughs> happy birthday to my son